What's up, this is EasyOSX, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an encrypted disk image. So an encrypted disk image is essentially a file uh, in the form of a disk image and that you can copy and paste. And as it is, it's simply just a encrypted file. But when you open up the disk image, you then will have a bunch of files that are unencrypted for you. So this is a really convenient way to transfer uh, secure files between different groups. If you need to transfer, say, a legal document or a financial document, something that you just don't want other people to see or just anyone to see, this is a great way to be able to take that file, encrypt it in a secure way, and then be able to transmit it between other computers or other users. So to get started, go up here to the File menu and go to New Image, and we're going to click Blank Image. If you already have a pre-existing folder of stuff that you want to encrypt, you can do that from this Image from Folder. But in this case, we're going to start with a purely blank image. So the first thing here, Save, is this is going to be the name of the disk image. This is going to be what you see when you transfer the encrypted file. So we'll just say nothing to see here. And tags, that can be just uh, color coding or something that you use to keep track of specific types of files, things like for work or for personal, etc. We're not going to worry about that at the moment. This will be where you save the file to. I'm going to leave that the same. Now the name down here is going to be different from the save as name. This is going to be the name of the disk image when it is unencrypted. This is going to be what you see when you're actually moving files in and out when everything is unencrypted. It works much the same as a flash drive, for example, or another disk image, like when you go to download and install software. So I'm going to name this my super secret spy files, just for fun. Now down here to size, we're going to set the size here. Now it falls to 100 megabytes, and you can actually change this to whatever you want. I'm going to just change this to, I don't need a whole lot of space, so I'm going to change this to 1 gigabyte. So it changed it by just changing the megabyte to GB instead of MB. Now next up is the format section. The format section is really going to be set based off where you're going to be using this encrypted disk image. So if you are going to be using it on another Mac, you can see that it's set to Mac OS Extended Journaled. This is the older Mac format, and this is fine, especially if you're going to be using it on Mac systems running an older version of Mac OS. If you're running newer Macs, I would recommend you use the APFS system instead. But if you're going to be using this on other operating systems, say mainly Windows or Linux, you're going to want to use XFAT instead. And this is mainly because XFAT is a much more widely used spec. It's used across operating systems. So I would recommend that instead. But in this case, I'm going to actually set it to APFS because I'm just going to be using it on this one Mac. Now next up, we have the encryption. And this is where you're going to set the security of this. So you have none, in which case there's not going to be any uh, encryption, no password, anyone can access this. You also have 128-bit AES encryption, and you have 256-bit AES encryption, which is, as you can see, this is more secure, but it is slower to lock and to unlock. I would honestly just recommend sticking with 256-bit. Yes, it's technically slower, but for most things, particularly the size of a one gigabyte file, it's really not going to be that significantly slower. Plus, it is more secure, and I really want to make sure that these files are kept secure. So I'm going to set that. Now you can see it has given me a password screen, and this is going to be a password you create. This is not your Mac password, and I certainly wouldn't recommend reusing a password. This is instead the password that's going to be used strictly for this disk image. If you're going to be sharing this file with another user, say for example you have a lawyer or an accountant, something like that, then you will give them this password. If you have trouble creating a password, you can of course go here to the key icon and Mac will have its password assistant that you can use to create a password. And you can set things like letters and numbers or numbers only, completely random, etc. as well as the length that you want it to be set to. So if we change this to 16, then it will do just that but I'm actually not going to be using this password. Instead, I'm going to be using my own, just for this example. So I hit choose. So that password is set now. Lastly, you have the partitions and the image format. In most cases, you can leave partitions just to GUID. If you recognize that you're going to be using a CD or DVD, go with the DVD option instead. And if you're going to be using older systems, particularly older Windows or Linux systems, you may want to go for MBR. Most modern systems, you're going to be fine just using the GUID instead. 
And lastly, you have the image formats. You have a couple different options here. The read write is the default. And likewise, you have a DVD CD master, sparse disk image, and sparse bundle. Read write is the default. And this is one where you're going to create the file. And when it's unencrypted, you can copy files off and on to this disk image. However, it is set at one gigabyte, regardless of how many files you have in there, it will always be a one gigabyte file. If you would like this file to maybe like adjust in size when it's encrypted, you may want to go instead with this sparse bundle disk image. What that does is it actually creates smaller subsections and puts files into these sections. If those sections are used, they take up space. However, if these sections are not used, instead they'll be compressed down and won't take up space. So while the maximum file size will still be one gigabyte, that's the amount of total space it can use. If I only have say a hundred megabyte file, when I go to lock that file again, it will only use 100 megabytes of space. And if you're going to be using a DVD or CD, just go with the DVD CD master instead. So I'm actually going to set this to the sparse bundle disk image. I need to set the size again. If you do change the image format, you're going to have to change the size. So be aware of that. Just kind of go over everything. Save as, name, disk, the format, encryption, partition, image format. I like everything I'm seeing. So I'm going to hit save and it's created. So let's go to my desktop and take a look. So as you can see here, I now have the nothing to see here file as well as the super secret spy files. So this is the unencrypted version. This is where I can store stuff into it. And this is the file that I would actually see on my computer that I could save onto a flash drive or into my Dropbox or uh, some other method. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to copy this picture into here. So now it's in this bundle. It's not encrypted yet because it's still unlocked, unencrypted. And I'm going to eject this and that is going to relock it. Let me minimize this. So now this file is encrypted and you can see if I go to get info, even though it's a max size of one gigabyte, it's only using about 19 megabytes because that's about the size that the picture I had was. Now it's encrypted. That picture is locked behind the wall. I mean, not counting the original I have here. And I'm going to double click to open this. And you can see I'm presented with the password. And this is the password that we created in Disk Utility. You also will see you have the option to remember password in your keychain. I wouldn't recommend this because that means if someone is able to get into your Mac, then that means they can unlock that file without being prompted for this password. If you really don't care, you can do that. But if you're really particularly worried about the security of your file, then I just would leave this unchecked. I'm going to type in the password now. Hit OK. And now you can see it is mounted and I can access my pictures. And of course, if I want to, I can take this out. And I can, of course, put it back in. And there you go. You now see that I have, in fact, created an encrypted disk image. And that's all you need to know. But thanks again for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to our channel for more Macs and iOS tips, tricks, and advice. You can also check us out again on the website easyosx.net or you can go to our social media pages. Thanks again.